Walser. I'm a scientist here at uh, Lund University in Sweden. I'm specialized in isotonic calorimetry and in a series of lectures I will give you information about isothermal calorimetry. Uh, and these lectures, they have been recorded by the company Calmetrics that manufactures calorimeters uh, and I'm working to, together with them. But uh, what I'm telling you is completely general for isothermal heat conduction calorimeters, whether they are commercial or, or home built instruments. Uh, the word calorimetry means to measure heat. It comes from a Latin color, which means heat, and the Greek word means to measure, so to measure heat. And there are lots of different types of calorimeters. These lectures are only about isothermal calorimeters. Uh, I should say one very common type of calorimeter is the differential scanning calorimeter, in which the temperature is changed. You can look at melting, for example. These lectures are not at all about that. Isothermal calorimetry, calorimeter at constant temperature. Uh, what we primarily measure in isothermal calorimetry is the thermal power. So write that here. Thermal power. This is the rate at which heat is produced. The units are watts. It is the same watts as in a light bulb or a vacuum cleaner or a heater. Actually, in a heater, all the power is, is uh, electrical power is made into heat. So if we have a heater marked 1,000 watts and put that in a calorimeter, we will measure 1,000 watts thermal power. Now that has to be a huge calorimeter. But there are actually some big calorimeters for studies of large animals and, and humans. But, uh, most such thermal calorimeters measure on very small samples and very low thermal powers. So we typically don't talk about watts. We talk about 1,000th of a watt, a milliwatt, or even a a microwatt, a millionth of a watt. Uh, unfortunately, thermal power is not uh, the only word for this. Uh, people also talk about heat production rate, heat flow, heat rate. So there are many sort of words for this. I would try to stick to thermal power, maybe the more, sometimes the more descriptive heat production rate. Um, yes, the heat. Is important here. And heat, that is measured in joules. So the thermal power is the rate at which heat is produced. And therefore, watts can also be written as joules per second. So if we integrate the thermal power, we measure process that has a certain thermal power during a certain due time, and we take the integral, we will get the heat. Especially in old literature, one can see the unit of calories, uh, which you shouldn't use because watts and euros are the SI units. Uh, one calorie is approximately 4.2 euros if you want to convert it. So, for example, 100 calories is 420 euros. Yes, I would like to show you an example of a calorimetric measurement. Uh, you see, it is very typical that you have the time. In this case is hours. It's almost two days, 48 hours here. And on the y-axis, we have the thermal power. So this is the primary output from an isothermal calorimeter. The thermal power as a function of time. In this case, the thermal power is milliwatts per gram cement, because this is a cement hydration measurement. And, uh, I will write that the reaction here is actually a very, very complex chemical reaction, but I write it like a simple chemical reaction. We have a cement powder that will mix with water. And this reacts, hardens, hydrates to form uh, oops, a hardened cement paste, like that, plus heat. So when this reaction takes place, heat is produced. So that's why we can use a calorimeter to follow the reaction of the cement with the water. Uh, as you can see, there are four curves. Uh, and they are all different because they are different cements. Uh, the blue curve here is the most typical one for a pure Portland, ordinary Portland cement. 
uh, it peaks after about five or ten hours, uh, and it has an initial dormant period where not much takes place, and there is the main reaction. There is a small second peak or a shoulder, very typical, and then the process is actually still taking place. It doesn't go down to zero until after a very, very long time. Uh, so this is the most typical for ordinary Portland cement. Um, the green curve here on the bottom here, this is uh, slag cement, so it's, it's actually ordinary Portland cement, but it has been uh, diluted with slag, which also reacts, but it reacts uh, much slower, so that reaction is not part of this measurement. So this is uh, uh, the reaction of the ordinary Portland cement part. Uh, and uh, there, are, there are two things here. First of all, it's very visual. You have four cement, you get four curves, so a power is a function of time, and it's all very visual. You can see that, that's the highest peak. Uh, this peak comes later than that peak, etc. It's very, it's very, it's a very good technique to do a first quick measurement and see, ah, differences. This one is much higher than that one, for example. Then you can also see details. You can see this second shoulder, for example. Quite difficult to detect with other measurement techniques because it's just a small, small extra heat being produced here. But it's actually, in cement technology, it's an important peak. As I said earlier, we have the solar power milliwatts per gram cement here. Uh, and that's very typical that we scale with the mass of the sample uh, because the, then we can compare different samples that have different masses. Uh, yeah, so this is a solar power. This is a primary measurement variable. This is what we get out from the calorimeter. Uh, if we integrate this, we will get the heat. And I can show you the heat here too. It's the same process, the same curves. They are calculated in the same way. And we see the blue curve. Uh, that was the one with the highest peak, highest thermal power. It's also on top here because it produces most heat. Uh, now the heat here is in joules per gram cement, so uh, still per, per gram cement. Uh, and we see that the slag cement has a much slower reaction rate. Now if I go back to the previous slide here, the thermal power, this is essentially the reaction rate. So we're looking at the rate of reaction, in this case of the cement the yields produced per second when this, when this reaction takes place. So here we're looking at the reaction rate. Now if we integrate, we look at how much heat has been produced, and that is proportional to how far the reaction has proceeded. So we're looking at the extent of reaction or degree of hydration in the case of cement here. So the higher up we come here, the more it has reacted. And actually, the, these curves, the older important cement curve, it will continue and level off at 400, 450 joules per gram when everything has reacted. So this scale here is the amount reacted or extent reacted scale. Uh, so that was the first lecture just introducing isothermic calorimetry with an example. In the next lectures I will talk about how you know, isothermic calorimetry is designed and uh, how to calibrate it, measure baselines, etc.